to the Royal Daily Tea YouTube channel. Please be advised all of my videos are for entertainment purposes only, based 100% on my own opinion, my own theories, and my own research. All of my information can be found on the public domain and falls under the fair use guidelines. Please feel free to do your own research. Hi everyone, it's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. So I do apologize for my absence, for not being around um, for the last couple of days. It wasn't on purpose, but I did do a two hour live with Padina on Saturday. So that is one of the main reasons why I haven't done a video. And I will have a link to that video on my community section. So if you'd like to see me and Padina talking about the Royals, you can go and check that out. Now I also apologize about this wonky lighting. I'm sitting by my window and there's a lot of sun and it was putting a lot of like flecks of light on me. So I just had to make it kind of dark in here. So today we're just gonna go over some royal topics and things that have been happening. As you know, there's just been so many things that have been happening at one time and many first, many historical moments that we're all just trying to live in real time and appreciate the historical significance. And then of course we have the whole tabloid fodder, a lot of rumors that are going around. So we're gonna go through and debunk some of those as well. So today is Monday, September 12th. A lot of you probably watched on TV that Her Majesty the Queen is still in Edinburgh. She made her way through the crowds of over 200,000 people lined the streets watching her procession to St. Giles Cathedral. And that was a heartbreaking moment to see. You got to see her children walk behind the casket as it went through the streets. You could see a lot of people were very silent. It was very, very respectful. She did have, I believe, the crown of Scotland placed upon her inside of the cathedral. Now, King Charles III, or we'll just call him King Charles, he led the procession of his siblings, uh, Princess Anne, Prince Edward, and Prince Andrew, into the church, and that's where they stood visual for the princess visual, or the visual of the princess, which is a tradition that dates back to King George V. And the very last time it happened was for the Queen Mother's funeral back in 2002. So I believe Her Majesty wanted this to happen where all four of her children stood guard over her coffin as it was open to the public and people could walk in and pay their respects to Her Majesty the Queen. Now we do know that Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family, it's a very polarizing very polarizing thing. There's a lot of people, of course, who want to get rid of the monarchy, especially after Queen Elizabeth II. Many people are in favor of ending the monarchy. You know, the monarchy represents a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So on social media and in the tabloids, you've seen many, many people, groups of people, and this is a topic that Padina and I spoke about, uh, spoke out against the royal family. You know, the whole slavery, colonization, very, very heated arguments, um, deep-rooted sentiments and beliefs, and um, go watch that video. She kind of gets into it a little bit more on her channel. But for the most part, most people have been very respectful of Her Majesty of her 70 years of service. Now, there was a little bit of a protester. A guy was um, heckling Prince Andrew today as they were walking behind his mother's casket on the way to St. Giles Cathedral. Somebody did say some slurs to Prince Andrew, and I believe he was arrested. You know, the police are not playing around here. Security is at all-time high. So there was a person who got pulled aside for saying comments to Prince Andrew. Again, Prince Andrew, Prince Harry, and Meghan Markle, whether you like them or not, they are family members of the Queen, and they are going to be at the funeral. And there are a lot of people who have very, very strong feelings toward them. And Prince Andrew is definitely one of them. So yes, people were definitely making it known their opinions of Prince Andrew. Now, I don't care for Prince Andrew, but it is his mother and he does have a right to be there. In my opinion, that is his mom. 
Um, now, Harry and Andrew will not be wearing military uniforms as they are non-working royals. Now, even though Anne has never served in the military, she is in a full military uniform as she has many honorary military titles as well as patronages. And so, yes, she will be fully decked out in a military uniform, but Andrew and Harry will not. So that's going to definitely be something you will notice uh, throughout the funeral. Now, on Monday, they are going to fly Her Majesty to London, where she's going to go to Westminster Abbey. And this is where she's going to lay in state for a few days until the actual formal funeral. Now, it is said that Prince William will also be among her children when she flies from Edinburgh to London to greet the casket. Prince Harry could also be in attendance. Now, there's been a lot of questions surrounding Meghan Markle and her children. Now, there's a lot of questions and comments and concerns and rumors in regarding Harry and Meghan. You know, Harry and Meghan were only supposed to be in Europe for a couple of days. They were there for Meghan to give her keynote speech at the One Young World Summit. Then they headed off to Dusseldorf for the Invictus Games. They were coming back for one more charity, and then they were back in the United States. Well, when Her Majesty passed away on Thursday, it kind of took everything uh, and put it into a tailspin. And now Harry and Meghan are separated from Lily and Archie. I'm not even sure if Meghan has multiple black dresses. I mean, those are things you have to think about. Do you have the proper morning clothes? Because she came in her devil in a red dress. You know, she had that red suit. She had those, you know, summer, you know, cream colored pants. And now she has to have black dresses. And so we don't know what she had in her closet in Frogmore besides her hidden journals. We don't know what else if she, you know, she had any clothes. So there's a rumor that the walkabout that happened between the Waleses and the Sussexes was one, there's a little, there's some discrepancies there. So apparently Harry and Meghan uh, had to scramble at the last minute to wear the proper morning clothes because again, we don't know if she even had a black dress with her. You have to remember she was only there for four or five days for certain events and she certainly wasn't wearing black for any of the events that I saw her at. So she definitely had to pull together some morning clothes, that is for sure. Now there's rumors that they were an hour late for the four of them to do their walkabout because Megan had to do her hair and makeup and had to find the proper morning gear. Now we've heard reports that uh, William offered the quote unquote olive branch to have the four of them walk about. And then there's other reports that Harry and Meghan were going to schedule their own walkabout with a camera crew. Now, I know that Harry and Meghan are, are hungry for that Netflix footage. Let's be honest. I mean, what the hell happened to the Netflix footage? Those poor people are hanging out there. There's nothing to film. So you know they're going to be in the audience filming the funeral, trying to get some tidbits of Harry and Meghan out there mourning Her Majesty. I mean, it's awful to say, but, you know, those people are on the time clock. You know, Meghan and Harry aren't going to ship them back, are they? I don't know. So the question is, do you believe that Harry and Meghan are so callous that they would apparently call a U.S. company, a media company, to let them know, hey, we're going to go do our own little walkabout here and thank the people who've come to Windsor Castle to lay their flowers. Now, I can see them doing that, but let's remember, Harry and Meghan are not liked. You know, they're not liked. People could boo them, throw tomatoes at them. They have no idea what kind of actual reception they're going to receive. I mean, I don't think Megan looked very comfortable. She looked very awkward when she was hanging out with the Fab Four. So in my opinion, I don't know if I believe the story that they put out that by themselves, they were going to do a walkabout, but I do believe that it was William texted his brother to show a level of solidarity for Her Majesty. The four of them did a walkabout. And again, it is rumored that Meghan held them up for an hour because she was doing her hair and makeup and trying to find a proper morning dress. I mean, can you imagine, you know, you're, you go over there for just a couple of days, you have a charity event. 
Now you have 10 days of official mourning. You have to wear black. You have to look a certain level. So you don't know what kind of wardrobe they have. That's definitely got to be an issue, you know, scrambling around trying to find her the proper attire. I don't think Kate's going to borrow, is going to lend her a dress. Let's just put it that way. So when you saw the Fab Four come out, it definitely made the front pages. You have the one camper saying, oh, look, the band's back together. They're reconciling. William sent the olive branch. Then you have the other one that maybe Prince Charles forced them to do it for royal duty. Then you have the other story saying that William found out that Harry and Meghan were trying to do their own walkabout, which honestly it could have happened. But again, considering the fact that the people in the audience gave them a very lukewarm reception, I can't imagine these two would have the gall to do a walkabout by themselves. Honestly, I think without William and Catherine, there might have been some tomatoes thrown. But most people have been very, very respectful uh, in showing their respect to the royals. And I believe King Charles has had a very positive reception. Both of his speeches were, you know, very, very well received. So I'm very surprised that nobody has heckled Prince Harry or Meghan Markle. That is why I don't know if I believe 100% they would feel confident enough without their, quote, security detail um, to walk amongst the people of the UK. So talk about weird and awkward timing. You know, Harry and Meghan thought they were going to fly to the UK. They were going to be in and out get the footage, and off they go. They had no idea that Her Majesty, unfortunately, was going to pass away this week and kind of put a chink in their plans. So not only did the horrible cut interview come out last week and the third episode of Meghan Markle's podcast drop, they're now having to face his family and the public of the UK. And I guarantee you, Harry and Meghan were not anticipating having to kind of face the music, right? Having to face the music this week, which is hilarious. So in the Cut article, which was horrendous, Megan alluded to the fact that uh, Harry acknowledged that he lost his father in the same way that Megan lost her father. And of course, Thomas Markle has come out and said, you didn't lose me, you dumped me. A big difference. But you know, Megan has her own interpretation of those events. So now he's surrounded by his father after literally alluding to the fact that, oh, well, lost my dad. Who cares? No big deal. And also the other comments that they've made about the royal family, all those little digs that she's been doing every single week in her podcast, and now they're face to face with the family. So needless to say, they have not been getting the nicest of receptions from their family, which is really, really sad, to be honest. So when Harry arrived, um, he found out that Her Majesty had passed away. He was the last person to arrive at Balmoral. He arrived about 8 p.m., and he was the very first person to leave at 8 in the morning, rushing off to go see little Megzy over at Frogmore Cottage. So it's definitely icy between them. I don't think this walkabout was definitely a truce. It was not a come to Jesus moment and let's sing kumbaya and hold hands. I don't think the royal family is ready to forgive and welcome them. They don't trust them. That is why Harry wasn't invited to fly with the other royals and he was late. So right there to me that signifies they consider him and Meghan still a security risk. Because we have to remember, Harry is still writing his memoir. His tell-all book is due out this fall. His wife has this weekly podcast where she's constantly taking pot shots at the royal family. And of course, that cut interview definitely had some horrible things to say about the royals. Now, a weird after fact is that Meghan had the author fired the person who penned the cut article was actually fired from their job. Apparently, Megan is retracting the statement that was made about Harry losing his father. So who knows if that was actually 
what she said, but somehow I kind of believe is what she said. But unfortunately, that poor girl lost her job. To say she got markled is an understatement. So talk about timing. They say timing is everything. Well, I guarantee you, Megan and Harry did not anticipate having to be around his family after the cut interview, after her podcast, and certainly not before his memoir was going to drop. So now it is very, very tense. It is very, very awkward. So many things are up in the air. A lot of people have questions about will Archie and Lilibet be flown in since Harry and Meghan are now on this extended stay in the UK. There's rumors that Doria could be flying in with the children for the funeral. That makes perfect sense. But I don't see Lilibet and Archie attending the funeral because, again, I think they're too young. As far as the Wells' children, I think George and Charlotte probably will be in attendance. Louis probably will not be because he's too young and fidgety. We definitely saw that at the Platinum Jubilee. So there's other rumors about will Archie and Lilibet get the prince and princess title. Now, technically, they are a prince and princess upon birth, but it hasn't been technically bestowed upon them by Charles and the crown. I don't see them honestly being styled as her royal highness, his royal highness, the prince and princess title. We know that uh, Charles is definitely streamlining the royal family as well as all of the European royals. They're all streamlining the royal families as well. Usually it's just the heir apparent and his children, kind of the next in line that are working royals. So I don't see Archie and Lily getting a prince and princess title. They might have a lord and lady or a master and lady title, but they're definitely not going to have a prince and princess title. I can't see that for two non-working royals as parents who are in another country to walk around with a prince and princess title doesn't make sense. And I loved how King Charles referred to his son expressing his love and admiration for Harry and Meghan and their quest for financial freedom overseas. He pretty much sent a pretty big message. I love my son. I love him from afar. I wish him the best. But apparently he's not going to be in the royal fold. He's letting people know he's going to be overseas, guys. Over there. Over there. So basically he's meaning they ain't living here, son. You ain't living here. You're over there. <laughs> We're going to mail you your Christmas presents. Don't come home. So that was a pretty big message, in my opinion, of where Harry and Meghan stand in the royal fold. No matter what, Charles loves his son, whether they're on good terms or bad terms, he's still a father, um, he's still a grandfather, he still has love and respect for them, although it's probably very hard for him to trust them. So I don't know if I see any royal reconciliations anytime soon. I don't think the royal family trusts them. The way that they made Harry get his own plane, he rode by himself on the way to Balmoral Castle, which is a pretty bad look, to be honest. Um, I think they're definitely going to be treated at arm's length. Again, there are some people who are speculating that Megan might have been wearing a microphone pack when she did the walkabout with the four of them. There's a really weird photo of her having a little pouch in the front. I, I don't know, guys. I don't know what to make of this woman, honestly. She just gets worse and worse. The merching and merchandising Markle, it's like she just can't stop. She better not be merchandising this funeral. It better not appear on their Netflix series. Again, they're just so classless. And the way that she was walking with the four of them doing her little boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, sauntering in the audience, it was just so awkward to see. And you could definitely see people were kind of turning their face, and I was loving it. It's like people were being nice to them, but you can tell there was not a lot of love for them. I think Megan not only has to prove herself to the royal family, but also to the people of the UK. I think Harry and Megan have a long, long way to go, but everything's going to um, fall into place after the funeral. So everything is really dependent upon Harry and Meghan. If they continue to swipe at the royal family, if Meghan continues with her A, B, C, D, E, F, G podcast, where every single episode she chooses a different word and takes a swipe at the royals, 
also um, Harry's memoir. We don't know what's going to happen in this memoir. And if you remember, Harry has a four book deal with Penguin Random House. And one book he said will be released after his grandmother passes. Well, you know, she just passed. So we have the first book that is due this fall. We have no idea what's going to happen in this memoir. We have Megan's podcast still going out there. And we have the Netflix series with a million and one hours of footage that just keeps on keeping on. It's like the decade of Megxit. When the hell when the hell is the show going to be finished? But you know they're getting footage from the Queen's funeral. So I don't know. I don't think the royal family is going to be extending any real olive branches. I think it's going to be we're going to love you from afar. But I think Megan might have been mic'd up, guys. I don't know. Like, honestly, can they really be that low? You know, I, I really like to think that she wasn't trying to do a walkabout by herself. She might have. And then people said she was wearing a mic pack at the Jubilee and it looked like she was wearing one now. Uh, at the walkabout. So I don't know, guys. You guys can have to let me know what you think. Do you think Megan is that low? <laughs> and do you think there's a reconciliation in the future? I personally feel that if they're really serious, they need to kill the Netflix series, kill the book, kill the podcast, keep your mouth shut. And Harry, you can become Harry the Handyman of Montecito H, the sprinkler man, get a new job, go work at Better Up. You know, you have millions upon millions of dollars from Spotify, let's not forget. So they have plenty of money coming in. Um, but I guess we'll wait and see what happens. So Her Majesty will be laying in state in Edinburgh in St. Giles Cathedral for uh, 24 hours. And then she's going to fly over to London on Tuesday, September 13th. Well, this is all the royal news that I have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Please be sure to check out my other social media accounts. I am very active on TikTok and Instagram, as well as I'm building up my brand new Patreon membership. Now, I will try to keep you updated this week in all things that are happening with Her Majesty's funeral and all of the royalty that is happening. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think Meghan and Harry might change their spots and they might be on a road to a royal reconciliation? Or do you think they're up to their old tricks? Leave me your comments, guys, down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.